lower score. Line. I just feel like a team that can put up 24 on Wisconsin can put up 31 on Utah State. So I'm saying 31-24. A lot of respect for Utah State's offense against a good BYU defense. I got BYU scoring 34, winning by a touchdown in front of a full house. It's going to be chilly, 40 degrees. We'll be in our parkas on Friday. That's our show for tonight. For Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, Brian Logan, and all of us at BYU TV Sports, I'm Dave McCann. BYU football with Kalani Sataki is coming up next, and we'll see you Friday night on Countdown and again next Tuesday. For more after further review here on BYU TV. Coming up, the Cougars enter October with a winning record and a date with Utah State. We are live in Studio C to queue it up with the head coach, Tristan Hodge, and J.D. Falslev as BYU football with Kalani Satake starts now. Oh, right. Let's it go. Finds his guy. Touchdown. Hill for a first down and more. Hurdles his way. Touchdown. Tied up, waiting, waiting. Here's the pass. Touchdown! Costa Luke, Luke on the sidelines of the play. Touchdown, BYU! Katoa, the reception, gets out the 25. First down on third down at 23. Mango throws, complete. First down again. Bushman and more! Hand off Lopini, and Lopini Katoa gets into the end zone for the touchdown. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building on the Brigham Young University campus in Provo, Utah, for another edition of BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, live on BYU TV and BYU Radio. And we've reached the halfway point of our show schedule already, as this Friday, the Cougars will hit the halfway point of their 2018 season with Utah State in town. We invite you to join tonight's conversation by using hashtag Sitake Show. You've got questions for Kalani and our guests, Tristan Hodge and J.D. Falslev. will then fire away on Twitter and BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram accounts. And to get tonight's show underway, let's welcome in the guy whose name is in the logo, the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Sitake. <laughs> Well, another week. Good practice today, so you guys know. Really good. And, yeah. a, and a good group here in Studio C. Special yeah. guests, by the way. A lot of The Rock is here tonight. Where are you, nice. Rock? Let's hear from The Rock. Yeah. Right. yeah. Love The Rock. You guys make tons of noise. That helps us out a lot. So thank you for, for always supporting us and camping out and all that stuff. So we appreciate you guys. We've also and got all the fans, too, yeah. Yeah, uh, BYU AD Tom Homo is in our audience tonight, too. Tom, thanks for being Tom. with us. Right on. Well, you, could, you could have Tom be in the show. You don't need me. No, we need you. We need football. you. We love Tom. We need you. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, you, you had a battle in Seattle uh, this past week, and we're always looking ahead on this show. We do a little bit of looking back, and it uh, uh, didn't go the way you or the guys wanted, and uh, I know that you just kind of felt coming out of it that... Uh, just didn't give yourselves a real shot in, in that one. Yeah, we felt like it was a, really a missed opportunity for us and uh, want to see how we match up with uh, a national powerhouse like Washington. And um, I don't think we gave ourselves really a shot to, to see how we measured up to them because we uh, did so many things against ourselves. You know, we um, shot ourselves in our foot uh, so many times and that's, you can't expect to beat a, a great team like that when, you, when you're just giving them uh, when you're just making as many mistakes as we made. And so um, I say that with giving a lot of credit to Washington because they're a great team. They showed, uh, in, in that stage, they showed a lot of poise and composure. And uh, they looked like a team that was in the national playoffs last year, you know. So uh, it's just a lot of uh, credit to Chris Peterson and his staff and, and their team. And, and hopefully we can get to that moment. Uh, we saw how we performed um, this year. And, We'll see them again next year, so hopefully we make a lot of improvement in the next uh, 365 days. We'll do a brief rewind of what uh, went down in Washington on a Saturday night. A great atmosphere up there at Husky Stadium, 70,000 plus. And uh, this was their first drive of the game when uh, Corbin forced an intentional grounding and actually uh, backed them up as they were driving, and they actually punted on that uh, first possession. Nice pressure from Corbin. Yeah, good play call. And we just, uh, they were really patient on offense. You know, we, we felt like we were getting some good knockback at the line of scrimmage. And, 
they're doing a lot of runs on the outside and really getting their their athletes in space against our guys and it just didn't pan out for us they just they're patient with the run game uh, you know I think uh, you see Tanner connecting with Bushman there I mean he he was uh, accurate and we felt good about the game plan just didn't execute in all in all phases of, of what we're trying to get done with all 11 guys in the field. Late in the first quarter got into the red zone but uh, got backed up on a penalty and then a number of penalties on that one drive kept BYU from scoring there. We go into the second quarter with BYU down by a score of 7-0. Uh, uh, Ed Lamb says that Skyler may have picked his head up a little bit on that field goal try that goes wide left. We stayed 7-zip and we are in the second quarter and uh, Miles Gaskin, he's Washington's all-time leading rusher. His quarterback is Washington's all-time leading passer and those two played well on this night, certainly. Uh, Lopini Cato was, was a bright spot for you, but uh, a late turnover in the first half sets Washington up to take what was a 14-0 lead, Kalani, and make it 21 before the break. Yeah, it was unfortunate. I mean, it's a, a mistake by the freshman, and, um, you know, we, we need him to hold on to the ball better, and it just it, it kind of swung things badly for us. He saw the missed field goal, and now uh, being down 14 with an opportunity for them to go with a QB uh, draw and, and, and uh, you know, get through and get in the end zone with uh, five seconds left. So uh, not a good, not an ideal moment for us, and uh, we, you know, we got three and out coming in out of the second half, and then, Washington just got things rolling and we're able to get, get the score up to 35 zip and um, I think we got off a, a, penal, a turnover off this muff punt. Get a lot of credit for Mitch for being there. Mitch Harris, our, our long snapper, uh, being able to get run hard and get downfield and, and uh, recover as soon as he dropped the ball. So And that play set BYU up for its uh, late score. And it was Lopini Katoa scoring for a third time in two weeks, third touchdown of the season and as a Cougar. And a 35-7 ended up being your final score. So a few of the numbers of notes are brought to you by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. And here were the uh, game stats, the way they rounded out at the end of it. Washington, a pretty productive and balanced night. The turnovers were not BYU's undoing. The margin was even there. It was just a, a pretty steady performance from the Huskies. And BYU never really got it going on offense and a chance to bounce back this week on a, on a short week at Kalani's, which is what it, what it comes down to. So no time to really feel too much sorry for yourselves on that one. It's already put in the rear view. You've had a couple days of practice already to get ready for a, a short week opponent. Yeah, I think it's important that we learn our lessons, though, and, and, and see the mistakes that we made. And, um, you know, the mistakes are part of the game, but we can't have uh, those type of mistakes uh, back to back to back to back. And, um, and, and we had missed assignments. I talked about it after the game where um, once things were getting kind of tight and we were down 14-0, down 21-0, guys started to press a little bit more and trying to do more than their job. And that's a, it's a tough way to learn it, you know, against these guys. But you're, you can't, if you can't do your part, you can't do somebody else's job either. And so um, that's where we, it's a little uncharacteristic of what we are about as a team. And we didn't play BYU football. And, but. I think uh, Washington got us off uh, off of what we normally would do, and um, a lot of credit to them. They're 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 type of team that we want to be, and uh, in order to do that, you have to show poise and composure in those tight games and in those moments when things are really stressful. So you've gotten through September, a five-game month uh, with four P5s, three of them on the road, two of them in the top 15. You've got a winning record. Uh, you're halfway to uh, to postseason eligibility. You, you picked up your third win in your fourth game this year. You got your third win in your 11th game last year. So there have been a lot of improvements from one season to the next, and, and you expect more wins to come, obviously. But uh, three and two through September, how do you look at that? I mean, just a lot of missed opportunities. <laughs> so. I just look at that as like, man, we, if we would have just, it's hard, especially this last week, to measure ourselves when we didn't really give us a shot, you know, and, and made tons of mistakes. And I don't know if the score, what the score would have been, but it would have been nice to find out, you know. And, and so now that said, we have to move on and, and learn our lessons, but get to the next game. And it's a day earlier, which helps me out. And, and our guys, we, we had a great practice today. I mean, our preparation hasn't been an issue. It's just more of getting ready and being being able to um, just do what we do in practice, do it in the games. And that's that's my fault. I'm the head coach. I, that's my job is to make sure our guys um, play loose and that they it, trans, it transfers over from the practice field to the to the game field. And that's, uh, that's hopefully we get that done this week. And we're trying a couple of new things and, and uh, new ways to do it. But I, I think, uh, yeah, it's just, as, as a head coach, these guys have to be ready. And I need to make sure that they, they get in that situation, an environment where they can be ready to play their best, play loose, and have fun on Friday night.
You're moving ahead minus another key player. Moroni Ulupututau will be out for the year, and that's unfortunate. You've been a little banged up here in the first month of the season. It's always tough to, to deal with injury, but it's a, a next man up scenario. But uh, Moroni had certainly been a big playmaker for you. Yeah, this is really unfortunate for him. He's such a great player, and, and he's worked hard. He battled back from his injury from last year, and um, I, I just t saw him before I came here. Um, you know, and, and I, th I think he's going to be, he's a resilient guy. He'll, he'll fight hard and get, he'll be back and be stronger. And so um, that knee will be healthy for next year and he'll be ready to roll. So he's got another year left to play and we need him. So uh, we'll support him. I know he'll do the rehab. He's been through all that before. It's a different type of injury. And um, he's, he's a strong kid, so he'll, he'll, be back. he'll be back, ready to roll. You got Butch Pau and Braden Elbakri back this past week. Uh, how are uh, Diane and Zane coming along? Zane's practicing. Diane's a little bit slower, but... Um, in practice, not as not as uh, further along as, as Zane is, but um, I think a, a lot of, there could be a lot of improvement in the next couple of days. So I'm planning on both of those guys playing, and that's you know they they get an extra day to, to heal up and watch conference. So <laughs> just just give it everything you got. <laughs> it, it is it is conference weekend. That means the Utah State game is upon us. Well, fans, just reminding your, everyone. Right? Yeah, yeah, for your day to day Cougar sports play by play, watch BYU Sports Nation. With Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan, weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, BYU and Utah State playing for the old wagon wheel. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I got no chill. TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff, BYU versus Utah State, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, Friday on BYU TV. I wanted to be a pro basketball player growing up. I can watch sports, I can attend sports, talking about sports. It just unites so many people. Like there's nothing like when something wild happens, everybody is connected in that one singular moment. Are you cool not being a pro baseball player? I kind of feel like I missed out not pursuing that 100%. But it's okay because even from the time I was like nine years old was, I want to talk about it. It feels like where I need to be. On Planet Splash a lot today, we follow an indigenous species through the course as she lives her young life. No. The pain of the struggle, of no. the times of hardness, Please, no. of falling upon no. her, of hurting her feet on the things, and then popping up to joy and glory in the end of times. Watch Splat a lot on BYU TV. Gather around for family movie nights on BYU TV. When a little girl hides in a mysterious wardrobe, she discovers a world called Narnia. But evil rules this magical place in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Grab the popcorn and hit the lights for family movie nights all this month on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, Healing for Life, and by Nissan, Innovation That Excites. Back for more BYU football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Good to have you along. Well, this Friday at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, it's a BYU and Utah State. Things are about to get wheel, as in the wagon wheel. You can still get tickets for this game. Seats are available uh, at BYUtickets.com. Yeah, we tried it. Uh, BYU on a short week and uh, Utah State, uh, Kalani coming off uh, bye week. Yeah, they have an extra week to prepare, so I think they... Um... They've done some they're an explosive team. They've made a lot of big plays and uh, had some big wins and put a lot of points on the board. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I say this every week. I know coaches on that staff, and they're really good. And they're really good at what they do, and they'll be ready. Matt Wells is a good coach. and so um, yeah, Like you have, they've gone to Big shot. Ten country already this year. Almost beat uh, Michigan State, whereas you guys got the win at Wisconsin. Yeah, they're close to winning that game. And, they, they you know, first game of the season, they... Uh, they came out and they looked, looked like they belong on the field the same with a Big Ten opponent like Michigan State. They have won three in a row and they are scoring a ton of points, but uh, 
doing it against a schedule that beyond the Michigan State game hasn't been nearly as stringent as, as yours. And uh, depending on certain measures, Kalani, you've played either the first or the fifth toughest schedule in the country through the first month of college football. You've certainly tested yourself uh, more than most. Yeah, that's what we love about the schedule. Me as a head coach, I just love seeing where, we, where we're at as a, as a program and uh, what we need to improve on. You know, um, I, I'm thankful that Tom Homo's given us this opportunity with the scheduling and give us the memories that we had at Wisconsin and the ones that we could have had against Washington, you know. So uh, those moments matter, but it, more than anything, it helps our program um, develop into what we know we can be. And so um, really looking forward to seeing what we can do now after a loss. So we bounced back from the Cal loss and, and did what we did in Wisconsin, and now we're looking forward to seeing our guys bounce back from this loss and have a lot of faith in our players and, and what we're doing. But the schedule, I think, has really set us up to, it does no good if we, if we don't show up and play our best this Friday. So uh, it's a great time mid-season and um, good time for all of us to get, get, get things rolling on all three phases of the, of, of, the, of the game. And I'm looking forward to it. I think we'll have a great game. You go from all these P5s to a rivalry game, so you stay right in the intensity. Uh, BYU and Utah State, when they met last year, uh, as we talk about the Ags a bit, uh, Jordan Love wasn't yet the man, but he is now. Uh, efficient passer, can run just enough, uh, and he's leading the team pretty well right now. Yeah, and he has, he, I mean, he's, he has composure. He, he hangs in the pocket, can throw the ball. He's got great completion percentage. Um, he, he runs the ball. He's, he's been able to pull the ball in third and fourth and short and make plays. Um, he, he's, a, he's a threat in, in all different parts of the game as a quarterback. They utilize him well. They run, they, they go really fast on, on, on the, with their tempo on offense and then defensively they're sound. Uh, they, bring, they bring pressure quite a bit and they're good coverage and so they're a good sound tackling fundamental team and so you know we'll, we'll have to be our, at our best and, and I expect our guys to be at the best especially after last week's uh, uh, inability to do so so I think this is going to be a big time for us and uh, just being able to just show up and do our thing and play our BYU type of football. Special teams note to Kalani, uh, you've got a kicker with a good leg in Skyler Southam. The last time BYU kicked a 50-yard field goal was 12 years ago. Their guy, Dominic Eberly, has 351 yarders in one game this year. He's something else. Yeah, and he's, I think he's 100%. He's 8-for-8 eight for eight eight for eight, field yeah. goals. And, um, but, yeah, he's got a great leg and, and uh, accurate, obviously. And, you know, ho but hopefully if they get into the red zone area, we can force field goals. I think we're pretty good at blocking them, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, hopefully we don't see him on the field much at all. We'll, we'll try to keep him off. All right, Cougars and Aggies this Friday night at Lavelle Everett Stadium. As we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen, and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. After our break, the coach taking your questions in studio and from social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. changing how you receive health care to give you more choices to be more personal like seeing a doctor from your hotel room rather than a patient room or seeing your primary care physician when you normally couldn't it's putting you first and also putting you more in control it's care how where and when you want it intermountain Healthcare. visit healingforlife.com Everybody enjoys a little prank from time to time. Add a little magic to the prank and things get even more interesting. What? That is insane. This season, I'm teaming up with families to prank siblings, friends, parents, and their kids. What? You're on TV right now. I'm Eric LeClaire, and it's time for a little mischief. This is why you brought me here? Catch the all-new season on BYU TV, premiering next Monday night. Awesome. Don't miss it. I'm a very bad dancer. But I've never yes. done this. Stacy, you need to tell us which cast member that is. That was Matt's dance. <laughs>
BYU TV Sports Post Game. BYU versus Utah State. Friday after the game. All right, Cougars in the NFL of note from this past weekend include uh, Taysom Hill. Yeah, he's throwing the ball now, too. Of course, it was a matter of time with the Saints. Uh, Kyle Van Noy made big play as the uh, Payet Pats got back on the winning track, beating the Dolphins. And uh, Fred Warner's a double-digit guy with tackles every week, third in the NFL on the tackle tally right now. He has been tremendous there in the Bay Area. All right, welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We are presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Reminder... Use hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions, the first of which begins right now. And let's go right in here in studio, and we uh, welcome to our mic, Spencer DeMann. Hello, Spencer. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, yeah, just uh, what factors and problems do you uh, that keep you up at night on both sides of the ball? Oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's part of the, the business. And then I, I make up stuff in my head on things to be prepared for. And then and I have children to worry about, too. So no, no different than you, Spencer. We're all the same. You know, so I, I, I say that, but I love every, every second of it. So it's, I mean, I like being up late and watching football as my job, you know. So uh, I, I really don't. The factors as far as I'm sitting here uh, over the weekend wondering why we didn't show up and play as loose as we could have and trying to look at all the different factors that actually matter and then seeing what we could address and myself as a head coach to allow our guys to play a lot more um, smoothly and focus and execute better. So that's, that's the stuff that I look at currently right now. Speaking of what keeps you awake, are you an alarm clock guy? Do you need an alarm to wake up in the morning? And what is a wake-up call for you like on a typical day? Yeah, I, I'm, my wife hates it, but I have two alarms, and they're usually far away, so I have to get up and walk. What time are they going off at? Usually like uh, before 6 sometime, yeah. But when do I get up? I don't know. It takes me... <laughs> I could go walk over to the other alarm, turn it off, and sit on the couch and fall asleep that quick, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's an early day either way. You're in the office it's, early, right? Yeah, I, I, I heard it's not good for you to set a bunch of alarms, but <laughs> I can't break it. That's, just, that's what I get into. And then I have this weird habit of waking up a minute before it goes off. And it's like, that's the most crucial minute I needed that minute <laughs> for my life. And so, yeah, so I try to set my alarm a minute before I normally would set it. There you go. Um, try it. It works. What, what's your, uh, what's your uh, regular bedtime, by the way, at night? I don't have one. I just go to bed whenever I feel, like, tired and usually watching film. And that's, like, you know, once I drop the remote, you know when you drop the remote and it hits the ground and it wakes you up? That's when it's that's time. That's when it's time. Ahead. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Social media. Jeff Carroll on Instagram asks, is there a big difference in playing rivals as a coach versus as a player? And do you especially look forward to those rivalry games? Oh, yeah. As a player, I loved them. I mean, that's... I knew the guys there. I, there. I was familiar with them and saw them around, hung out with them. So uh, the players are a little different. As coaches, just focused on the players and just letting them enjoy it and uh, trying to create an environment where they all could flourish, you know. And that's that's kind of what I'm. I, I wish I could play. That I still want to play to this day, <laughs> but my body can't do it. And um, and coaching to me is the next best thing. So that's that's why I, I get a lot of joy from doing that. Okay, back on our studio mic, we have Robbie Peckham. Hello, Robbie. How's it going? Good. I just wanted to ask, how do you help the team prepare, you know, facing opponents like Wisconsin, then McNeese State, then Washington, very different caliber opponents? Yeah, so the main thing is to focus on what we can do and how we can improve ourselves and then really keep the focus on us. And then more when you're, when you're looking at the other team and the other opponent, it's more of what their tendencies are um, rather than the talent level, you know, so... Uh, you don't you, when you when we ask somebody to cover the post, it doesn't matter if you're a safety who's running the post route. It just matters that you're in the right spot at the right time, and then um, you know, and then you worry about the talent when you play when you play them, and you can kind of um, get a good feeling. It just doesn't help when you're not in the post when you're supposed to be. Then then it all falls apart, you know. And that's kind of what we had a little bit this last weekend. Not really about assignments in the past game, more. In, more about our, our technique and our assignments and, and where we're supposed to be and fitting in the tackles. Our goal is to try to stop the run and uh, take away the run so that the team can be one-dimensional and uh, that just didn't work and they kept us on our heels the, the entire game. So that's, that's what we focus on ourselves and then 
look at the other team, just the tendencies more than anything and what we expect to see, and then um, worry about the talent later when we get to play against them. Okay, Robbie, thank you. Uh, social media, David Holiday uh, from Facebook asks, how do you keep the guys from getting too emotional against Utah State if you end up uh, being provoked by someone on that team? <laughs> yeah, I think that's been our, our, our deal is just trying to stay calm and, and um, not get too excited. But we keep talking about our, how toughness is our, is our deal at BYU, and that's, that's our mantra is, is our, our, that we're tough guys. Um, but to me, the toughest guy in a fight is the one that's willing to walk away. You know, so this isn't an actual fight. It's a physical confrontation on the football field. We understand that, but it's in between the whistles, and we'll take advantage of that on the field and in between the whistles. And so if, if the provoking and all that stuff, we don't trash talk, we don't do any of that stuff. Uh, only bad decisions happen when you're angry. I'm, I'm speaking from experience, and we can all agree that when you're angry, you don't make the best decisions, so why would I want my players to be angry? I want them to have composure and and make plays and have a good time. I mean, I think you can get a lot more from loving what you're doing and being with the people that you love being around and playing the game with compared to anger, you know what I mean? So that's going to be our focus, and uh, I, don't, I don't think our guys would have any issues with it. Okay, more social media, at Tanner Lewis on Twitter. How much does last year's game at Utah State uh, win by uh, the Aggies, how much does it play into the motivation for this week? Oh, a lot. I mean, I think we started the game real quick, and... We're up on top of them early and um, made tons of mistakes and uh, started getting turnovers and, and pick sixes and things like that and, and then uh, blinked and the score was all of a sudden different, you know. So um, mistakes will not help in this game. They don't help in any of our games, obviously from, from the Washington game. So we need to minimize the mistakes and, and then use effort and playing hard and, and playing uh, and executing cleanly to make up for any mistakes that do happen. So that's going to be the key for, in this game for us. Um, we've, we've taken care of the football. Um, even in the last week's game, it was only one turnover, but I wasn't happy with just the ball being on the ground. We had a couple, I think, three, three fumbles that, that they could have gotten, you know, and so um, that, that needs to be cleaned up, and that's my job as a head coach is to make sure that our guys are using the right technique and making sure that they're securing the football. Um, stuff happens. I mean, there's not a team out there that hasn't, throwing an interception the entire season. You know, even the great Tom Brady throws picks. So, um, but what you need to do is make sure that they're, they're not just because we're being careless with the football or taking risks, risks when you shouldn't be. So that's, we just want to execute the game, game plan, play clean, have fun, and then see what the score is. And I think it'll work out in our favor. By the way, before we hit break here, and thanks for the questions, folks. Uh, the, the pen and the whistle are not props. Uh, you just came off the practice field. We need to tell yeah. people that when you come and say good practice, you like go right from there to here, right? So you're just but using. You want these. me to blow the whistle just to make sure you guys know it's real. It's a real, <laughs> it's a real right. whistle. All right, everyone, up down, just go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the pen, it just it, it works. So <laughs> I don't. Know, I can draw a mustache on you. No, <laughs> we're good on that. All right, Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Get better acquainted with Cougars past and present on. Behind the mic, it's weekly hour of in-depth Cougar conversations, Wednesdays, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Coming up after the break, we're joined by BYU offensive lineman Tristan Hodge. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Call it a path. Or a way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Okay, everyone, gather around. After four years of hard work, we are so excited to finally release this to the world. Secret, it's important, but I think I can trust it will either be super fun or the worst thing ever. Is it real? It's hard to say. It's 50-50. It's, it's definitely not the middle. You're in love with someone else? Yes. Yes. No! 
Girl, you know it. Please, no. No? Are you okay? How dare you ask that? I think it's safe to assume that James is dead. This is getting weirdly personal. The rest of the cast of Studio CL. Very impressive. Surprisingly impressive. Excellent. Really? Really. 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 It's insane. Absolutely brilliant. This is why I love you. Mm -hmm. And I love you. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Oh, that feels good to say. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What in the blooming beast of burden was that? <laughs> I did it. Don't miss Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, live on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Time now to meet this week's player guest on our weekly broadcast. And just like Taysom Hill, he is the pride of Pocatello. Please welcome redshirt sophomore offensive lineman Tristan Hodge. Good to see you. How are you? See you soon. Your seat right there. Sweet. I warmed it up for you. And did you two just come from practice? I sure did. I even I even got a shower. I said that's the fastest I've ever showered in my life. <laughs> I didn't shower. Just came straight. <laughs> Good to have you here. Hey, great, great to be here. I, I mentioned Pocatello. Uh, how long was that home for you? Oh, geez, uh, 20 years that was home for me. And my parents just recently moved up to Idaho Falls about a year ago. So Pocatello will always be home. How much does Taysom Hill a thing up there? Oh, I mean, during high school, I mean, that was a, that was a huge thing. You know, Taysom was everywhere. That, he was the he was the talk of the town. You know, he was the he was the big guy on campus. You know, at Highland, it was always great having him back. You know, and just knowing you knew when he was there. You walk in Highland, you you just knew you're like, oh, I think Taysom's back. But you know, it was great. It was always great. So, uh, so yeah. This is some of you as a kid uh, growing up there. Uh, Cowboys, huh? That, was, that, uh, was that like Pop Warner? Yeah, that was my Pop Warner team. Uh, I think that photo, I might be sixth or seventh grade. Okay. Yeah, maybe sixth. Yeah, seventh grade was a different phase. So Highland High, uh, <laughs> Tays 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 Taysom's there before you, obviously. Yes. But, but you played with a guy who's currently a teammate in Wayne Tay Kirby, right? You yes, I did. Team? Yep. And how about uh, Connor Harding, the hoopster? Yes, yep, we were, they were all a um, year younger than me, so I mean, you know, but we always knew each other, we were always good friends, so yeah, it's good to have them here. Okay, I see your dad around occasionally, your dad's easy to spot. Oh yeah, he's Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> now, now he is, this is him back in the day, good heavens. <laughs> hey, you know what, I, I, I have to say he's not too far off nowadays either. He's pretty ripped still, right? Yes. Oh yeah, you know. no, oh, yeah. yeah. But now you can see him because he's got this snow white goatee going on, right? Oh, yeah. full, full beard. Oh, no, yeah, that's right oh, too, yeah. it is full, it's more full, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, Kalani, what would you say about uh, Pop Marty here? I love him. Yeah, yeah. I tried to suit him up the other day when I saw him at practice. <laughs> he looks like he can still play, but yeah, I, can, I can appreciate a guy that lifts a lot of weights and, and pumps out guys like this <laughs> for us. How much is dad still an example in terms of just physical fitness for you? Oh, huge. I mean, you know, every time I go home, you know, he's my, he's my training coach when I'm home, you know, during breaks. And, you know, he's so knowledgeable. He's taught me a lot, you know, since, you know, I was a kid, you know, he, a lot of my habits now when, in training, I learned from him, you know, from a young age. So I, I attribute a lot to, to my dad. But when did you get a sense that, uh, that, that being fit was a big part of his life? Oh, geez. I think that photo right there. I mean, you can see it on my face. I'm like kind of, hmm, I think, I think my dad's a big fitness guy. And so from there, you know, I, just, I understood. Yeah, you can see it on my face. Like, yeah, this is a big part. So, yeah. so uh, you had a, a really nice, uh, an impressive high school career. A lot of accomplishments. Uh, Individual is important, but team, too. You guys are a really good team, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I love the, the high school team. You know, we... we um, we had to sit with the same kind of, you know, atmospheres we did here. You know, we wanted to make ourselves, you know, a family. That's the biggest thing. And, you know, I think, that I, I think that's why I felt, feel so at home here is I have that same experience. You got a lot of attention from teams in the West for obvious reasons, but uh, they came from the Midwest to get you, and that was uh, Notre Dame. The recruiting process and being recruited by Notre Dame, how did that all play out for you? You know, I, uh, I committed really early in my uh, recruiting career. I can be, I'll be honest, um, you know, recruiting in me, I was like, yeah, 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 recruiting, it was just all a big game and all that. And, um, and so I, I committed very early. I think, geez, probably the summer of my sophomore year. So I was committed for a long time um, and all that. So, I mean, yeah, it was a big journey getting there. Um, There's a lot of things that I chose, but of course, you know, as things played out, you know, I've never intended going to college to, hey, I'm going to go to Notre Dame for a couple of years and then transfer. That was never the intention. But, you know, as that journey, you know, brought me here, you know, I think there's a there's definitely, you know, a sense of destiny that brought me here.
Kalani, if you're good enough to play at Notre Dame, you're good enough to play anywhere in this country. And so when, when you got Tristan coming back to you, you, you knew you got a good one, right? Yeah, and the academics and the hard work. I mean, his work ethic is awesome. Uh, trees, we call him Tree. Okay. So, uh, but tree, Tree's a, he's a guy that's versatile. He can play so many different positions. I mean, he can play D-line. He can play all five positions, center, guard, tackle, and, and on the old line, so he's a versatile guy, but he's athletic and he's strong, um, and he's just got so much, so much things going for him. He's a great leader for us, and he's only a sophomore, so we plan on having him for a while. Yep. You know, and he's gonna, but he's got, he's a guy that that's a, a team guy first, and 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 when he was here and worked as as, as a red shirt, he he uh, made us better. You know, so I'm I'm really excited to have him on the team, and um, you know his his to have his dad around is, is awesome. We love love having our players and their families around, but. Tree's a stud, man, and, he, and a nickname like Tree, you have to be a stud. <laughs> <laughs> so why was BYU the right place for you when it was time to, to make a move? You know, um, uh, a lot of it was the, was the culture aspect. You know, I wanted that that team feel where I was, you know, f I feel at home, where, you know, there, it's a family, you know, outside of, you know, the, the athletic complex, I can sit here and hang with any one of these guys and say, you know what, I can call anyone about, hey, Come, let's come, come on to my place. Come play some, come play some games, or let's go do something. You know, I, I have that true brotherly feel between every one of these guys, and I knew that. I mean, I had come here because Bo was here. Um, I'd, I'd come and visit him a few times. He's a cousin of yours. Yes, yeah. and I also, uh, um, yeah. So I visited a few times. And I'd seen, you know, the culture through that aspect, and I was like, you know what, this is, this is awesome. You know, this is something I, I really, you know. I gravitate to and so that's that's an what brought me here you had a coaching change at your position halfway through here as, as they brought coach Pugh in along with the OC coach Grimes who's an O-line guy as you know so there's a lot of O-line feel with this staff right oh yes absolutely and how's, uh, how's Coach Pugh helped you uh, personally with your game, along with Jeff? Incredibly. You know, they, they are very um, intense, but, you know, they, these coaches, they, they understand, you know, the value of, you know, just, just coaching us instead of, you know, and, and not getting on us in the wrong ways. You know, we, we have so much fun in the old line room. I mean, it's almost, it's almost scary. <laughs> I mean, uh, every, every meeting day, yeah, we learn incredible. I mean, it's, we learn so much, but we also have so much fun doing it that, I mean, it doesn't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like work. It's just, it's just that fun. Uh, you guys have been working to open up some nice holes in five games this year. And, and really, when this team is running, with most of it, when this team is running, you guys are winning. And, and we can look at the games BYU's won this year and, and found that uh, the, the, the ground numbers are where you want them to be, right? And, and when you haven't won, you probably haven't probably performed as a group as, as well as you'd like to. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. You know, I think the, the biggest thing is, is, is when we, you know, operate as a unit, all five of us across the board, and we're doing, you know, our job and helping each other and communicating and being on the same page, I think, you know, we, we can accomplish, you know, wonders, you know, for this team. Of the guys who are starting on the O-line right now, really only Austin Hoyt had a lot of reps with BYU before this year. Everyone else to his left uh, of the starters right now are getting their first reps with BYU this year. So you guys have a lot of room to grow together, don't you? Yeah, I agree, you know, and, and of course, uh, I like to call him Papa Hoyt because, yeah, he, he does have <laughs> A, the most experience out of us but um that being said you know we learn so much from each other and that that ability for us to grow i think is what helps us excel as each one of us can grow every single day and learn something new to better ourselves as players Colony, I'm not, I'm not sure the chances of us going back to back to back, but this is consecutive offensive linemen on this show. We had Austin last week, and we have Tristan this week. Well, there's a bunch of them that would love to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have so much fun together, it is scary, Tristan said. So, uh, yeah, we may just keep it keep We have it to rolling. keep it limited to one, though. If we get more than one, they, they take up a lot of space, and they take up a lot of attention. So that's a, it's a it good is. thing on the football just, just, field, but no, maybe not on the show. Okay, one at a time, it is. <laughs> All right. Fans, if you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online then pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Coming up after the break, a guy from up uh, Logan Way who beat the Yaggies in 2012 on this play. J.D. Falslev joining us. Plus, we'll have your questions for Tristan and J.D. from the audience and social media on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. I volunteer at Primary Children's Hospital because I care about helping families with sick kids. I volunteer at the 512 Foundation because I care about our kids and community. And I volunteer because I care about Utah's future engineers. Do you know someone who cares about making our community better? I Am Flash will recognize your unsung hero and donate $1,000 to their favorite local charity. IamFlash.com slash hero. I care about making the world a happier place. I feel like we're home right here.
On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Reminder to use the hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter, and you can also comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our next Q&A sessions coming up very shortly. Well, first up, we meet a Cache County native who knows just how much the BYU-USU rivalry means to both programs. Please welcome in former BYU receiver, return man, grad assistant coach, and now offensive analyst from Smithfield, Utah, J.D. Falslev. <laughs> See you. Oh, you're over there. It's like, it's like the position of honor. Front yeah. and center. Front down. and center. Did you sit in this? Am I going to break it now? I hope not. <laughs> All right. I hope not. First things first, JD. And I know it's first things first probably in every conversation you have these days. How long is this sticking around? I don't know. I, uh, I guess as long as Coach Grimes has it, I'll stick around and have it. It's getting a little lengthy, but... It's nice and it's nice and healthy. Does it does it told. does it work for you? Do you look at it in the morning and go, yeah, yeah, I like no, this. No, I look in the it, the mustache doesn't matter. I look in the mirror and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Hey, it's all it's all about team building, right? Exactly. Part of the group. Uh, exactly. J D stands for Joshua David. How long have you been J D? Since birth. Uh, my father named me uh, J D. His name's Dave, so my middle name's David, and he had the whole intention the whole time to, to call me J D. Um, he had a good friend in college named J.O. and liked the two letters, so. You got some case. pictures of. Uh, oh, geez. That's my first picture in IPF. Yeah, that's freshman right. year. Yeah, and of course, we, we talked about your playing days. And uh, in your spare time, uh, yeah. you like to golf. That may pop up at some point as well. But uh, we saw you on a, uh, on a Harley as a, like a kid, like a wee. Who's started the, who's young. The, who's got motorcycles in your family? Started young. Uh, my godfather has one. He lets me drive his, so I've got his up in Heber. And, Drive it all over the place. It's uh, it's one of my passions, one of my getaways. Um, because when I'm on a Harley, you're not on your phone. You're not, you're you're just one with nature. You're you're riding. I don't listen to music or do any of that. I just ride. It's a nice place to get away from everything. Tristan, can you respect the motorcycle vibe? You know, I had a moped once, <laughs> <laughs> but I wrecked on it. So I'm. I'm probably going to ixony that until, one, you know, until I'm done with the yeah. football. <laughs> That's the buttercream gang. The <laughs> That's the buttercream. So for those who don't know, Smithfield, Utah, puts you relative to Logan where? Um, roughly 5, 10 miles north. Okay, so growing up, Aggie? Yeah, yeah, and uh, specifically their basketball team. I love their basketball team. I went to all their games, cheered, cheered loud and proud. Uh, so definitely have some Aggie blood. For sure. Okay, so when you were playing football and, uh, and, and it was time to think about going to the next level, mm -hmm. who had interest in you? Um, there were a handful of schools, specifically Ivy League schools, um, and, and I had received a few school or academic scholarships that way, um, but it was mainly junior colleges, uh, Snow, um, SU a little bit, but I, had, I, I wanted to play football at a high level, and when, when Bronco Mendenhall offered me an opportunity to walk on and, and say, hey, come earn your way, I was excited about that. I wanted to play ball, and then I looked at the education that I could get along with that, and I said, shoot, if I can get into that school, why not? And, and I got accepted, and the rest is history. Kalani, did you notice J.D. from afar when you were elsewhere? Oh, yeah, defending him. And then you <laughs> notice guys on other teams, and he's one that stood out that... I just liked him. He had this this swag and moxie about him that the confidence, you know, and just like 
just liked the way he played the game. He, he always 100% and stood out to me. I just loved watching him when we were preparing for him. And, um, and then getting to meet him, and when I got the job here, he's everything that you see on film. He works hard. He's going he's gonna to be a great coach, and uh, just love having him on the staff because he's he adds so much to what we do as a, as, a, as a team, and not just an offense, but for me as a head coach and for our unit. And uh, Tree and the other players, they, they love and respect him. So, um, and he's you know he's a guy that rides a Harley. He's a tough guy, so he <laughs> he gets it. And but he he works hard. And his work ethic is, is, is unmatched out there for a guy that's, that's pretty, pretty much made himself who he is right now. And his coaching career is just starting, but he's going to be an awesome coach. Tristan, what, uh, what does J.D. bring to your group? You know, he's got a fire about him. You know, that's one thing is, is, is a lot of the times we're coming off the field, you know, you, you see him just coming toward, you know, the O-line group and all that. He's just, he's just got this fire about him. You know, he's like a little chihuahua. <laughs> he's, got that ang- he's got that angst, you know, but that, but that, you know, that brings a lot of, you know, that, that bleeds over. It's contagious. And when he brings that to us, you know, it fires us up. And, you know, next time we go out, we have that fire ready to go. Okay, Utah State-BYU rivalry. How have you seen it over the years and how do you view it now? Uh, it's... Uh... Growing up watching it, 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 was, it wasn't what the rivalry is now um, because Utah State, uh, Gary Anderson went up there and I think he did exceptional things. And he, he went up there in the middle of my senior year of high school and I got to see the changes take place the rest of my senior year of high school and I was happy for the program and I still am. I, I wish them the very best all but one game. As long as I'm coaching against them <laughs> or playing against them, I cheer for them. Um, that's my hometown, but the rivalry now, I love it because there's a lot of emotion in it and there's a lot of, of the wagon wheel and, and bragging rights inside the state, but at the same time, it's a football game. And so it's nice to see that it stays a football game, but it's also nice to see that there's emotion behind it and that there's, there's a respect for one another, but when the, when the whistle blows and the game's going, it's, it's a war and we're excited. To, to play a good team. They're, they're a great team. And they've got some exceptional players on both sides of the ball. Um, so I'm excited for, for Friday. One of the games you played against them was in 2012. It was a 6-3 game. People go, oh, that's three yeah. field goals. No, there was one touchdown in that game, and, and you scored it. So you basically had the game-winning score. So 2012, right before the half, uh, Taysom Hill to J.D. Falslet. PAT was missed, and that was the touchdown. That was the 6 and the 6-3. And a very nice route that J.D. runs to get open for this play. You remember this uh, score? It was the I only do. score in the game. It was. Nice reverse pivot. I and name the play. Yeah. And uh, Taysom was your guy there. And uh, was. you and Taysom, were you guys living together at the time? Were you roommates? We were. We were. Um, and, and I had a lot of fun living with him. But that game in particular, I remember it being such a battle just to move the football. And they had an exceptional defense. They had an All-American defensive back and Will Davis and he and he played a great game but I remember going into half having a score on the board and that kind of helped us understand like look they're in it for the fight and we got to we got to step up in the second half and we didn't end up scoring any more points but we got the win and that shows what this rivalry is is that no matter what that team has done prior to the game this is a this is an exceptional football game and it's a fun one to watch. Okay, flashing forward, we call you an offensive analyst now. What yeah. are you doing on a day-to-day basis and on game day with this I get guys? to analyze all day. No, <laughs> I, uh, I do a lot of, uh, uh, of helping with, with, with signal and stuff to, to Tanner and com- being a communication between him and A-Rod, uh, our quarterback coach, and in the office, anything from helping with, with script and, and call sheets to, to help game plan, uh, breaking down opponent film and, and, and helping with ideas. Uh, I've learned a lot this year. I've been able to pick the minds of Coach Grimes and all the other offensive coaches, and I've seen myself grow as a coach more than I I, I thought I could in one year. Yeah, how how much has the coaching bug bit you now? It's been in me for a long time, (laughs) and that's, that's, I think, how I got started. My my sophomore year of of college, I kind of planted the seed with Bronco. I was like, hey, I'd like to coach. And... He gave me a call and gave me an opportunity to be a graduate assistant, and I jumped at it. And it's been 
one heck of a ride. It's been fun. It's great to still have you here, by the way. I appreciate it. Feel that. like you've been here forever, and that's all right with me. It it's is. all good. It all is. right, Mondays at 1 Eastern, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on the coordinator's corner with Jeff Grimes, Elisa Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. Mondays, 1 Eastern, 11 Mountain on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, your question for Katie Falsett and Tristan Hodge and BYU football with Kalani Chitake continues. Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Chicken wing. I love you. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Defend against Platt a lot, we have some fabulous people. First off, Stacy's best friend from high school, who also plays the tuba and the flute. Gildar? Yeah, definitely. And up next, we have Tori's secret admirer bird crush. Kookaburra! Yes! And also a smile that could crush a navy. Nitrous. <laughs> and we have a little something something that we found between Tori's toes. Pinkler. Yes! <laughs> Splat a lot. Mondays at 630 Mountain, followed by Studio C on BYU TV. I'm a very bad dancer, but I've yes, never yes. done this. Stacy, you need to tell us which cast member that is. That was Matt's dance. <laughs> Sports Countdown to Kickoff, BYU versus Utah State, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, Friday on BYU TV. I'm in Zach Katoa. I'm a freshman and I play running back. My favorite movie is The Lion King. My favorite non-BYU sports team is the Dallas Cowboys. Bucket list place to go is Paris. Favorite music group or artist, Motown. Favorite food. Sushi, would you rather sing or dance? Dance, Beach Mountains Beach. Uh, favorite TV show, La Avatar The Last Airbender. Favorite non-football hobby, Fortnite. Favorite athlete, Nash Bushman. Biggest fear, Matt Bushman. Favorite superhero, uh, Iron Man, Michael LeBron. LeBron, favorite coach, Coach Stewart. All right, that's our guy, Zach Lopini Katoa. Welcome back. We have both uh, Tristan Hodge and J.D. Falslev joining Kalani and me on set. Now we turn to you, the fans, for Q&A time for our special guest. And we're going to start right here in Studio C, Andrew Klingon-Smith with, uh, with us here at the mic. Hello. Hi, Andrew. Tristan, <laughs> how long have you played football and... <laughs> what is your favorite part? Jeez, I'm trying to think, how long have I played football? I played football for so long. I think I really started with, was with flag football. I was about probably six or seven. Um, and my, I think my favorite thing about football is the team. You know, just hanging out with your team and definitely, uh, definitely the locker room after a big win. And your yeah, favorite part is the locker room after a win? Oh, absolutely. Okay, right. Uh, what, uh, what's your what's your uh, personal mo after a big win? Are you a dancer or are you just a? Um, I, I don't know if you call it dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of like it's more like flailing because I'm just such a big guy. I just I'm not coordinated in that aspect. Um, I do a lot of yelling. I mean, at least I'm pretty loud with my uh, with my voice. So I, that's kind of that's kind of where I go to. Uh, JD, do you want to uh, endorse what he just yeah, said? He or, doesn't, uh... he, it's not dancing. <laughs> it's not. No, it, it, you can see the raw emotion. It's an emotional uh, uh, excitement that it's fun to see. It's fun to see as a coach. Kalani, who breaks it down the best in a celebration after a win? Oh, I, I just love seeing all the guys just smile and have fun. So um, just looking forward to seeing that on Friday. It's been, it's been a little while, so we'll try to get that going on Friday night. And... Um, Maybe someone will show you Tristan's dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> you do a pretty good job, by the way. I've seen you 
yeah, get down I, a little I, bit. I have to. I mean, that's, you know, my daughters, they, they keep me in, in touch with all the good dancing. I'd, I'd like to show some old school dances, though. Cabbage Patch and stuff like that. <laughs> Roger Rabbit, the real Roger, running yeah. man, all that. The, the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, at jflory47 on Twitter, this is for JD. Uh, JD, what is the biggest change you've seen in the program since you entered BYU as a player as compared to now as a coach or an analyst, if we will? Uh, that's, that's a hard question because there's been a lot, but I would say uh, the biggest change, I'd have to say the, the camaraderie from coaches to players. Um, not to say there was any disconnection between the previous staff and this staff or even other staffs in, in the past, but uh, I see players walking up and down the second floor where the coaches' offices are and they're meeting with the coaches and doing all kinds of stuff like that. That didn't happen as much when, when I was a player uh, for whatever reason, but I think it's a testament to the coaches that are here now that they invest in these players and they love these kids and are willing to go to war with these guys and, and do some hard things with these guys and teach them how to be young men. And it's, I would say just that camaraderie for sure is a okay. big change. JD, good to have you with us. You too, Tristan, Thanks. appreciate you. Appreciate okay, you thanks a lot. That's J.D. False Love. Chris, Tristan Hodge with us. Thank you, guys. All right, Breakdown Cougar Football with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Brian Logan, and Dave Nixon each week on After Further Review. Tuesday, 7 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. We are back to wrap up tonight's show right after this on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner. And amazing rates on home mortgages, so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. Another one, boy! I feel like we're home right here. Short week, Friday night. Join us on BYU Radio for Cougar pregame live at 7 Eastern. BYU TV's countdown to kickoff is live at 8 Eastern. The game is at then 9 Eastern on ESPN2 and BYU Radio with postgame coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio right after. And tickets remain available for this game at BYUtickets.com. BYU football with Kalani Sitake brought to you by in part by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. So the loss to Cal kind of recalibrated your team. You've had a loss to Washington. Maybe expecting a similar kind of reset this week against the Aggies? Yeah, of course. And just we, we told our players um, that we're going to get an extra day of rest, you know, being on, on Saturday. And so uh, I'll ask the fans to do the same thing. Let's just empty our tank, scream all you want, make as much noise as we can, lose your voice. I'll try to do the same thing, and then we'll try to recover Sunday and, uh, Saturday and Sunday during conference. Okay, good luck Friday night. All right, guys. All right, all right. that'll do it. Folks, love to see you here in studio next week. In Studio C, it'll be at 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain Time. For Tristan Hodge, J.D. Falls, for them, the coach, Kalani Sitake. I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio. So long. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with thoughts.
to do Green trees, red rocks And don't forget the blue sky The sunshine shining fun shine Oh, and only think I might just stay a while Hi, I'm Dave McCann. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. You're watching BYU TV on KBYU DT Provost.